We are Chris Lee, Blake Lovell, and Max Barr at Southeastern 14 here to preview Alabama and Tennessee, the latest in a series of huge SEC matchups. This one's super entertaining. A little bit of a contrast of styles. We'll get into all the particulars of that in just a moment. But first, a reminder, our stuff's brought to you by Ben Online, which continues to be your number one source for all your basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. With up-to-the-minute odds, stats, and trends, you can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with live in-game betting contests and all the best player props experience. The world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop or your mobile devices. Head to Bet Online today. Become part of the team. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, the game starts here. Well, this one is going to start 7 Central in Tuscaloosa. You can catch it on ESPN. We're doing this Thursday morning, so we don't have a line on this game. That said, Ken Palm has got Alabama as a two-point favorite. If you look at Ken Palm right now, very interesting. You've, you've got Tennessee 5, Auburn 6, Alabama 7. It has got these three teams all within a, a point and a half of each other or so on, on a neutral floor. So lots of competitive balance in the SEC. But Tennessee is first of all those teams. Again, I would expect to be favored on a neutral floor. Defends much better than Alabama, but as we become fond of saying, at least one of us. Um, sometimes, Blake Lovell, you can just outscore the other guy. Yeah, I mean, I haven't been wrong with that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm sure we're going to bring up the defensive efficiency number in this game, but Alabama did not score Tennessee, outscore Tennessee last time uh, as they scored 71 at TBA at the Food City Center in Knoxville, Tennessee. And... Yeah, they just did not play well, and that was a predictable spot for Alabama to just get their doors blown off there, um, and it happened for all the reasons we said it would, that Alabama would struggle to get their offense going. They turned it over 22 times in that game. Um, they shot four of 21 from three. <laughs> so all the things that Alabama needs to do to be successful, they could do essentially none of them at Tennessee uh, on January the 20th. But it is not January the 20th. These two teams have come uh, a long way since then. Both have had a few ups and downs along the way. But listen, this is, uh, as always, who's the home team? And that gives you a bit of a an advantage in a game like this. And I think that it is quite a setup here for the Crimson Tide. They've been hearing about this game for a month now. And all they've done is, you know, yes, given up a lot of points to Kentucky, but they just keep scoring and scoring and scoring some more. And meanwhile, for Tennessee, they have just been on a tear here recently. I mean, they have just blown out teams left and right. They get a huge win over Auburn. Um, and now it sets us up for the biggest game of the SEC season here, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Real quick, before I get into any of a breakdown or anything like that, uh, anticipated line, Torvik and, and Ken Palm, actually, for, for once, line up pretty perfectly. Uh, both have about a two-point favorite for Alabama, which is going to be interesting because a lot of people are just going to look at that first matchup and just take their conclusion from there. They'll see Alabama as a favorite it might be one point, might be a pick em, might be two points, might even be out to three or four. But they'll, whatever it is, they'll see, oh, my gosh, Tennessee won by 20 last time. And now they're on, now they're catching points. So I expect the public here, uh, the, the large majority of the public bet to be uh, on the road underdog, which is always dangerous. Road underdogs, always, always dangerous to uh, to back them. Um, but. Looking back from that uh, from that first matchup, Grant Nelson only played what sixteen minutes because of uh, foul trouble. So I, I'd be I'd be shocked if he if that was the case again, especially with this one being at Coleman. Um, and I think Latrell Wrightsell also was in was in foul trouble. Not sure if he'll be good to go or not. I'm kind of leaning towards he probably will be good to go. He traveled with the team and was was going through warmups and everything. So I would. 
if I was to put a bet on it right now, I would I would lean towards right cell probably playing. Um, but like we always say with Tennessee and, and how we've we kind of were saying it in our preview of the last Tennessee game, we know the blueprint that Tennessee, the type of team Tennessee does not like to play. You look at their losses, AM, Mississippi State, South Carolina, these real physical, slow possession by possession, half court against half court, you kind of eats into Tennessee's pace and, and connect and all that, and it slows the game down. And that's where Tennessee has dropped games against these faster teams where Tennessee's been able to fly. They've just mopped the floor with teams. I mean, they've just they've ran quality teams out of the building that play this faster pace. Alabama. Florida. So I like how it's out for, for Alabama. I like how it's at home and how that performance at Tennessee the first time, I think they're, they'll play much, much better. But in the same at the same time, this is the type of team Tennessee likes to play. They like to play these fast-paced up-and-down games. That's their bread and butter this year. So not seeing much matchup-wise where either team's going to be able to run away with this one like it was in the first time where we were like, oh, boy. Alabama's walking into a, a tough situation here. Not getting a vibe like that this time. Max, that's really interesting. And I'm looking at the SEC only stats on Ken Palm. Alabama, number one in tempo, average possession link yep. when it's got the ball, 14.8 seconds. Tennessee defending it, 18.4 seconds. That's the next to slowest tempo in terms of what it does to you defensively. I mean, this is. Strength on strength. It's it's the number one defense in the league and it's the number one offense in the league. So who who wins that's gonna be very interesting. Now the other side of the ball, Tennessee not known for its offense outside of Dalton Connect, but pretty good team. Third offensive efficiency, Alabama. We, we've said Alabama's just mediocre defensively, eighth in the league in defensive efficiency. So those are the numbers. What pops out to you guys statistically about the matchup or anything individually? I mean, you got the connect on Sears thing. You could see either of those guys go for over 30 points. There's so much here, I think, to unpack. Uh, but what interests you the most? And I'll, I'll let Blake start this time. Well, I mean, remember last time Sears played 33 minutes, but remember he was coming off that ankle injury, mm -hmm. which, yeah. uh, I mean, we don't we don't want to go back to that, do we, Chris? But Sears no. was coming off the angle injury. I don't think he was 100%, but he still was out there for 33 minutes. He did have seven turnovers. And there were just times where it felt like he's there were just turnovers he doesn't usually make. But I think you, that's a combination of maybe he wasn't 100% versus, oh, yeah, I'm playing Tennessee. And they're going to make you make turnovers that you don't usually make, too. So, um, I mean, you guys brought up some good points. We, we kind of used the – Max brought up the point about Tennessee against these kind of teams. We kind of used the same thing against Ole Miss when they played Alabama. We're like, Ole Miss just has not fared where, well against teams like this. And that is something that the more you look into it, you can kind of realize, okay, yeah, you know, th th there's something to that. Like there is something to kind of these sort of trends when you play certain types of teams, certain types of styles. Um, and, yeah, so, I mean, individually, I don't – what else do we say on the fact that these two teams may have the two best players in the SEC? And, um, yeah, I mean, it's really the supporting cast, this the right cell play. Like That's a that's a huge storyline here uh, because you need everything you can get offensively against Tennessee. Um, I mean, you know, there, there's – Alabama's front court has to play well here. That's really, to me, probably the biggest story in this game is going to be those guys have to play well. They have to rebound. They have to defend um, because, look, they, that like it or not, I mean, we were still going to keep bringing it up, but, like, sure, Don Connect has been fantastic, but there are still those spots for Tennessee where offensively, if he's not scoring, they struggle a little bit. And so um, Alabama's going to need to play well defensively, and if they can find a way just to put that pressure on Connect, he's good enough to beat them. <laughs> I mean, we've seen him do that to other teams, but – I, I would do everything I can to try to just force these other guys to step up and make the plays that they have at times done. But there have been other times where Tennessee will go stretches without scoring. And if you do that against Alabama, you're probably in trouble because you just assume, especially in Tuscaloosa, a place where we've talked about kind of the, the numbers for Alabama, although 
they're sort of just breaking those at this point because they're going on the road and scoring 109, 895, 103. I don't know where they – it doesn't matter where they play at this point. But, look, I mean, they're they're a team that is going to score a lot of points. So, Tennessee's going to have to – who's going to be the guy? Is it Ziegler? Is it Vescovy? You know, is it Adu? Who, who is it that steps up and has a huge game offensively here? Because I don't think it can just be Dalton Connect, even though, as we've said, he's good enough to beat anybody. But – I'm curious against a team like this that struggles defensively. Who are we talking about the most after Dalton Connect for Tennessee in this game? That that's an interesting question. Are we ready for picks? I think we are. No, no, no. We're not. <laughs> Have at it. I'm just, I'm, I'm just kidding. I got my pick. I'm ready. I will tell you though, it's the first time all season. I am the least confident on what you two guys are going to do. Usually I, I can read you and I know exactly what you're going to pick. I have no idea who either of you are picking in this one. So that is, that's how big this game is. So just saying, I, I don't have a clue who you guys are going with. Although I think I know who Chris is going with. Max, I'm not sure about. So Chris has a tell. You'll know once I give my. And I, I have a feeling I know who Chris is going with. But Max, I have no clue what you're doing here. All right, I'm I'm the customary first picker, and I'll I'll build some suspense here. Oh, Max wow. Barr, wow, Chris, suspense. My man Max Barr, forget this other guy to, to my right as you look at it. <laughs> you pointed the wrong way. You pointed <laughs> to, to your left as you look at it. Whatever. To, forget this Blake guy. He doesn't matter right now. Wow, Max, you, you brought up some very interesting stuff about the teams that give Alabama trouble, and I hadn't thought about that. Blake, you brought up some stuff about Alabama's home road splits. Um, Alabama's last four home games, listen to these point totals. And, and again, they, they're scoring anywhere against anybody right now. But Florida at home, February 21st, Alabama scores 98 points in a win. February the 17th, 100 points against Texas A&M at home. Rio's all I mean, in. you 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 hear what happens when you try to defend these guys, especially in Tuscaloosa. I mean, it's just it's just shrieking in panic. Um, Mississippi State, ninety nine points. These are some teams in here that can defend. Although Florida I might like a word with you guys here. All that aside, what have we said all year? We talked about big games and big spots. Tennessee had a very emotional game against Auburn. Mm. left it all on the floor. Dalton, mm. he came back for more. Can these guys hold up in Alabama? Alabama's got a lot to play for, got embarrassed the first time. He's it, trying it's, to tell us hurting. something. He's he trying is, to he tell is. us something. Be careful with your pick, because he's trying to tell oh, us something God. here. This guy like Ron Burgundy talking to Baxter here is what this is like. You need to go over there and just give him a talking to. <laughs> Put him off the bridge. <laughs> don't, don't punt him off the bridge. Don't do that. But that, that would get me in some trouble here. My goodness. The pick is Alabama. Max Barr, you're up next. Wow. Okay. Mm. I, I I did not think you were going to pick Alabama. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So here's here's what I'm looking at. Here's what I'm looking at. Tennessee, and you're gonna you'll know who I'm picking when I after I go through this. Tennessee here. I told you the games that they've lost. Texas A&M, under 70 possessions. South Carolina, under 70 possessions. Mississippi State, there were 73. Um, but that was a game that I think Hubbard and Tolu Smith combined for like 50, something like that. Um, and it was at Mississippi State. Give it to them. Here's what I'm looking at, though, and it caught my eye here. Let's go through Tennessee's road games in SEC play. They played at Missouri. One. Played at Arkansas. They won. Won a big game at Kentucky. They didn't have DJ Wagner. Won at Vandy. Won at Georgia. That's it. Lost That's it. A&M. That's it. And they lost to Texas A&M. I was going through their wins. And they lost oh. to A&M. That is not a good away schedule. That is much worse, in fact, than I thought it was. I mean... Their best win is a Wagner-less reeling Kentucky team. I'm going Alabama here, man. 
I'm going Bama. Oh, we put this man on his. I'm going oh, Bama. Wow. Grant Nelson wow. was a non-factor last time. Coming. Grant Nelson was a 16-minute non-factor. He's going to play 30-plus and protect the paint. <laughs> right cell will be back. Troops are ready. All, they'll all have their hard hats on, the white hard hats. Place will be rocking. Connect just put up 39. He's going to have to replicate something like that on the road now. Let down spot. Give me the tide. Speaking wow. of hats, can we zoom in on Blake's hat to make sure there's nothing crawling yeah, there? Ladybug? Yeah. Wow. Man, we, we have put this man on the spot. He is absolutely this. incredible that you two are both lining up for the Alabama Crimson Tide here, the team that I have been championing all year long. The guy said it, 6-5, and five, the Alabama Crimson Tide, they're toast. They were not toast. They have turned into a full-blown, I don't know, omelet, Wagon. whatever you want to call them. <laughs> what? Um, but they're not toast. <laughs> toast is just bland. You how don't does, want toast. How does toast turn to an omelet? <laughs> uh, trust me, that's the Alabama Crimson Tide. They'll put you in a blender. Um, so the Tide have He's been really rolling. Now. <laughs> they've been – oh, no, I've, I've known my pick from the start. They've been rolling right along. And now they get the phenomenon known as the college game day curse <sighs> as the Tide. Get game day coming to town, all of the hype – Surrounding this game, the last time game day came to town in the state of Alabama, what happened? Not talking the about The Auburn it. Tigers delivered a not-so-Auburn Tigers-like performance as the Kentucky Wildcats came in and they clawed their way to victory. This time around, Max said every single thing he could say to tell you that Tennessee plays well against these kind of opponents. And then what did he do? He picked the Alabama Crimson Tide. So, the guy who made the bold prediction of the Alabama Crimson Tide winning the SEC this year and knowing that this is the game that could secure that victory, I shall not put the Southeastern 14 kiss of death on the Alabama Crimson Tide. The Tennessee Vols <laughs> and Dalton oh Connect my go on the road victorious for the first time at Coleman Coliseum this year, the away team. Actually, sorry, that's the second time. I apologize. I forgot Clemson won there. Teams in orange play well in oh, Tuscaloosa. Geez. There's another trend that you were not expecting. Game day, teams in orange. Who else is in orange that's visiting Tuscaloosa this year? Eastern Kentucky, not orange. Arkansas State, not orange. Clemson. Mercer, South Alabama, Indiana State. More Mercer got a little orange in there, don't they? But that's not yeah. their primary well, color, I don't think. Um, yeah. So there you go. That's all you need to see. Teams in orange going to Colvin Coliseum fare very well from what I understand. So give me the balls. Sometimes a team just has another team's number. And I think the way that Tennessee plays defense, if there's a team that can pull this off against Alabama and slow them down a little bit, we saw it in Knoxville. It's going to be more difficult in this game. I will be honest with you. What I said a minute ago really worries me about Tennessee in that if Dalton Connect has a five-minute lull, six-minute lull, Alabama could score 25 in there. And Tennessee may not have the offense to keep up, but I'm going to take a chance on the Vols here for absolutely no reason at all other than the fact that I'm picking them to win the game. I think you're confused. Because you brought toast and omelet into this, and this isn't in the no. food city center. Mm. Great point, Chris. Uh, true. I just, I, as true. your friend, I'm just trying to to save you from yourself before you make this official. Well, okay. So, all right. So Tennessee beat them by 20 last time, and just completely controlled the game with their defense. I hey, I I would never hedge on a prediction. I would never make no. a prediction and then still win if the prediction does not come true. Because if Alabama wins and Tennessee doesn't win, then my Alabama winning the SEC 
it's one step closer there, Chris. Chess. Playing chess here. We're not come on. High level is what we're doing here. So game day. It's not the Southeastern 14 kiss it's game day. If game day wasn't there, I'd pick Alabama. I want to see what kind of chess you play to get Dennis Gates a win. And you can find that out by hitting the subscribe button. You can hit the like button if you like us. That'd be nice. We're picking all the games this weekend, not just this one, involving SEC basketball teams. Hope you have as much fun with this as we do. Can't wait Big to see this Brett. one. You're Big welcome. Baller Brett. You're welcome, Big Baller Brett. I did that for you. <laughs> Thank you to Big Baller Brett and all our fans for watching us here. He is Blake Lovell. He is Max Barr. I'm Chris Lee. We are Southeastern 14, presented by Bet Online.